Before a mink pelt is skinned, the fur should be carefully cleaned with a small brush. It's especially important to remember to brush the fur in the direction in which it grows. This diagram indicates the exact place where the main cut is to be made. Hang your catch by its hind leg from a solid support and using a sharp knife, make an incision on the inner side of the legs from one heel to the other. Next, make a triangular cut around the anus. This type of cut doesn't damage the fur and it prevents the grease from the anal glands from going on the fur. Free the skin under the paw with a knife. Free the legs by slipping your fingers between the carcass and the skin. Leave the claws on the carcass. Repeat the same procedure with the other leg. Free the rump and the lower back near the tail. Now is the time to remove the tailbone. This is done with a tail stripper, which is a simple and efficient tool sold commercially. Place the base of the tailbone in the opening at the center of the tool and close it. Holding the rump of the mink, pull the stripper down and the skin will come right off. When working with a male mink, be careful when freeing the penis. Use only your fingers to keep the hole as small as possible. With a firm and steady pull of the thumbs, the pelt is pulled down as far as the front legs. You only need to use your hands for this. Once the skin is down to the front legs, Insert your thumb under the skin behind the leg and pull the skin firmly as far as the claws. Be careful not to pull too hard as you risk tearing the pelt. If you're afraid of making a tear near the end of the leg, cut the skin very close to the claws with a knife. Now that the front legs are free, pull the pelt steadily until you feel a slight resistance. You'll see two white cartilages on either side of the head. These are the ears. Cut off the lobes with a knife. You'll feel some resistance again when near the eyes. Slide the blade of a sharp knife onto the eyebrow bone, keeping the tip of the blade pointed towards the skull. This will free the eyelids and only leave the two eye holes in the leather. Finally, using the same careful technique, the lips are easily cut. Now that the skinning is finished, we begin the second phase of the preparation, fleshing. Minks are relatively easy to flesh. Here, the trapper is using a solid board of the proper size. A fleshing beam can also be used, although it's more commonly used for otter and raccoon skins because the fleshing of these animals is more difficult. Fleshing is always done from the tail down to the nose. 
To prevent grease from running onto the tail and rump hair, use sawdust grit. Remember that the first grating of your fur is done at this part of the pelt. It's very important not to press the scraper too hard because you could cut the hair roots. This would leave you with a very clean pelt, but little fur, which would make it worth considerably less. There is a reddish membrane called the saddle on the leather in the middle of the back. The fat and flesh must be taken off the saddle, and in certain regions of Canada where minks are more fatty, the saddle itself is removed. The fat between the saddle and the leather is removed with a blunt knife. Now that the skin has been fleshed, we can go on to the stretching and drying stage. First of all, choose a drawing board that corresponds to the size of the pelt. Then, with a tail splitting guide, split the tail open. The essential thing to remember and to be concerned about when mounting the pelt is that the density of the fur, especially on the back, is the first quality criteria when your pelt is being graded. If you stretch the mink pelt too tightly on the board, it could end up being worthless you should take the exact opposite approach. Before attaching the pelt to the board with push pins, pull the leather tightly from the top to the bottom to try to get as much fur density as possible in the lower back area. Start attaching the pelt to the board by the lower back, putting a push pin on either side of the tail. If you've gathered the fur on the back well, a pad will have formed in the middle. This indicates that the first part of the stretching has been done well. Then place the hind legs along the tail leather out and attach them to the board with push pins. This will give even more density to the back fur. One good way to check if the pelt has been mounted symmetrically is to examine the position of the eyes and the ears relative to the board. Raise the tail as you spread it out and then attach it to a metal screen. Wipe the leather with a damp paper towel. The forelegs are cut off about a half inch from the leather and pushed inside the pelt with the tip of the knife. The ideal drying temperature is about 13 degrees Celsius. The skin should be kept away from direct sunlight, preferably in a dark room. Cutting off the lower lip makes for a better presentation. Now the trapper cuts an inspection window on the belly to allow the grader to evaluate the fur more easily. An incision is made from the middle of the belly down to the legs on either side. This procedure also gives the trapper the opportunity to remove what little oil may have formed here and thus improve the appearance of the pelt. The window in no way lessens the value of the pelt because the length of the pelt is measured on the back and not on the belly. Using the back of the knife, push the hair back inside through the window. This is when the belly wedge is pushed under the pelt as far as the mouth opening. 
The belly wedge is necessary for removing the pelt from the board later on. It's important to hang the pelt's head down so that any grease can run off the tip of the nose. Use a paper towel from time to time to wipe off any grease that seeps out during the drying. The important thing to remember with muskrats is that special care must be taken in cleaning and drying the fur before the skinning. Simply because once the pelt has been attached to the drying board, the fur stays on the inside during the subsequent grading and marketing procedures. During fleshing, this will also help avoid damaging the leather with the scraper on the fleshing board. Only use a soft brush to clean the pelt. Before starting, cut off the forefeet with pliers. Remember that muskrats often have tularemia, so wear surgical gloves when preparing the pelts. Skinning begins with the hind legs. An incision is made from the tip of the paw to the base of the tail and about one inch along it. This extended cut makes it possible to attach the pelt on the frame without perforating the leather. Hang the animal up by the tail. Next, the trapper inserts his fingers between the carcass and the lower back and gently loosens the back skin. The same procedure is used on the belly side. Then he frees the legs with his fingers between the carcass and the leather. The trapper very carefully pulls the fur down to the front legs. The ligaments are cut off with a knife. Then, still working very carefully, the trapper puts one of his fingers under the leather behind the leg to free it. The same procedure is followed for the other leg. Then. Maintain the pulling motion until you feel a slight resistance. You'll see two white cartilages on either side of the head, which are the ears. Cut off the lobes with a knife. A similar resistance will be felt near the eyes. Slide the blade of the knife onto the eyebrow bone. You'll then see the two eye openings on the leather. Finally, gently free the lips and the nose.
Usually, a muskrat is fleshed on the solid drawing board used for otters. Fleshing is done with a spoon, a dull knife, or a scraper. Be careful not to remove the saddle, the reddish membrane found on the back. If you remove it, you risk cutting the root hairs, which would greatly lessen the value of the pelt. However, if there's a lot of fat under the saddle, it can easily be removed by lightly scraping it down towards the bottom of the pelt. Now that the leather has been cleaned, only the stretching is left, which is really quite simple. All you have to do is put the pelt on a wire frame designed especially for muskrats and center it. This frame allows the inside of the pelt to air and dries the leather quickly. Attach the tail to the tensor hook at the bottom of the frame on the dorsal and belly sides. To gain maximum pelt length, put a two and a half inch nail through the nose opening and bring it out through an eyelid. Attaching the bottom of the pelt to the frame with a clothespin on each side also helps obtain maximum length. The pelt is dried head down so that no grease will run on the fur at the base of the tail. Leave your frame in a cool, well-ventilated room, out of sunlight. It should only take two days to dry the pelt. <laughs>